The Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA, was established in 1999. It took over from what was previously called VELT, the Vehicle Examination and Licensing Division. Over the years, there have been concerns about the operations that take place here at the DVLA. People complain about delays, people complain about long queues, people complain about Goro boys, that is, middle men and women who come to you when you come here for a service and promise you quick service. Our understanding is that the DVLA has a customer service division which is expected to make processes simple and easier. And towards the end of this month, January 2014, we are told that many of the processes that take place here, including registration of vehicles and roadworthiness will all be done through automation by an online registration process. Now, with the, the, the change in the law, the DVLA has authorized private garages to begin the processes of vehicle examination to, and, and roadworthiness, which are done in private garages. So those ones are not done here. So today on Joy News Exclusive, we are here to explore the operations of the DVLA. Join me and let's take a walk through the DVLA and have a chat with the individual segments or sections of the, uh, of the people that take care of things here. My name is Stephen Enti and this is Joy News Exclusive. Um, here in the DVLA, you do know that uh, people come in to register their vehicles, and one of the first things that you need to do when you are at the DVLA is to have your vehicle physically inspected, and then they will determine whether it has uh, it, it, it passes road worthiness before you begin the process uh, itself. Anything you want to do in connection with vehicle registration. So, I'm standing here at the canopy. They call it a canopy, and uh, I'll quickly get an interaction with Rashid, who is in charge here, to to walk us through exactly what they look out for when you bring your vehicle here for testing. This is Joy News exclusive. So Rashid, nice to meet you. Nice so to meet you too. this guy is open. Uh, so yeah. typically, what do you do when uh, somebody brings a vehicle like that for you to do an inspection? When they come, we first check that whether they've been to private garage for road bedding inspection. And how are you able to detect that? When they go to the private garage and come, they are given a test certificate with a, a receipt. Certificate with a receipt. So we cross-check okay. and see whether they have been there. Okay. Then we'll take technical information of the vehicle, what you will need to pay to fill on the forms. Okay. That is what we, we take. Okay. The chassis number, the color, uh, the tire size, the vehicle weight, and then other technical information that concern the vehicle. Then from there, we do something we call identification. We try to identify the owner or the importer before we ask you to go and pay. Can you fill your forms? After that, then we sign before you go. This must number. take a long process. No wonder people queue. I mean, you go through all of this, or it's easy for you to go through without wasting people's time when they come. No, it depends. When people are not many, it's easy. But when the queue is long, definitely you will be in the queue for okay. So can you physically demonstrate when you have verified all of this and you are sure that they've gone through the um, private garage, what, what is your work now? What then will be your work on the car itself? Also, my work is now to take the technical information of the vehicle. Okay. I will extract that information from the vehicle. Then I write it at the back of the paper okay. for you. Then after that, I will identify you. From there, then I ask you to pay. That's where you get our forms. Okay. Then I the see. information I've given you, you fill it, and then you okay. bring it for further signing. Okay. So have you finished with this one? This one, I've just taken the technical, technical information of the day. And then what is next for you to do? I'm now identifying him, then I'll ask him to go and pay. Okay, so can you go through that process for us to see? Like, uh, identify him and everything. Have you done it? No, I'm yet to So do it. if you can have the chat with the yeah. owner whilst we're here, yeah. we'll be grateful. Who is Kofi? I'm for Japan. Are you? 
Are you the guy or you are working for somebody? Mr. Ram. Mr. Ram. Yeah. Then you have to bring him because otherwise the process cannot continue. Yeah. So who is he? It could be it could be an agent yeah, or it could be somebody who is he's helping he's or it could be a relative yeah. of the person. If he's, then he will come with that letter. Then I will identify him. His name will be mentioned in the letter. So he will come with his ID and then identify him as the person who has been mentioned in the ID before I can ask him to go and pay. Then that's it. After yeah. he, he pays, then you, the thing will leave this place yeah. and go to the next. So yeah. Where will be the next uh, place no, the next to go point from you here? Pay and get your forms. Filling. Get your form. After you have filled, you have done everything, I will sign for you before you go in to block A for the number. So in block A, you just do payments and get the number. You Basically, pay. that's Yeah, right. payment and the number. That's what you do. So it means that the real work of fiscally inspecting whether the car is is good has good brakes as um, everything is good in terms of mechanical uh, efficiency is yeah. done at, the, at private. the private garage after that they give you a certificate so that is where we if we want to understand the kind of testing that go on the actual where road go, where it, where it is, yeah, that's yeah. where it goes. Yeah. so this this one there is yeah, more that's I'm administrative yeah, procedure yeah, taking kind information of the vehicle Okay. Yeah. So how do you deal with the Goro boys when they are? Because this young man who came, I'm sure that he is helping somebody quickening the process and to get some small cuts. Do you face them all the time and how are you able to deal with them and well, ensure we, that one, we, they don't disrupt your yeah, work, yeah. they don't slow down the process for the customers and they, they also in business really. We advise that the client, the customer should come should themselves. Come direct. When you come yourself, it's even easier. As you mean, Okon was here himself. I just, and then you go. It's, it's, it's not anything, but you know the Ghanaian is, you wouldn't come. Come yourself. But I said, well, if you are here, I just mean it for you to go and go. It's just simple for me. If it's like that, it's simple for me. Okay. changes have gone on in order to make the work of DVLA easier, smoother and perhaps less frustrating to the various citizens who will be going through the uh, long queues etc etc. So I need you to tell us the major changes that have taken place in DVLA in, in the form of automation. We understand that the, the, the DVLA is going through uh, restructuring to make automation possible. How far with that? Um, thank you so much. We, as an authority, have been trying all along the line to uh, make things a little bit easier for our clients. We've also trying to uh, make sure that uh, wherever you are, you can really uh, access us and then uh, do whatever you want to do where you are. As at now, we have the driver licensing section, and then the vehicle registration section. You can see our licenses are now just like that of Europe, yeah. America, etc. Um, at the registration center, we are also trying that and when you want to register a vehicle, you can even do that registration online. We have the hope that um, this will be launched this January. Okay. And then when it's launched, the brochure you are seeing there uh, directives as to how to register your vehicle, do transfer online, is all stated in it. And then uh, our clients, there will not be need of every client coming here to have work uh, in terms of registration and other activities. That I know that one of the key issues uh, facing any vehicle registration authority will be the detection of fake documentation, fake licenses, fake everything. I mean, people have the, the attitude of coming through the back door with fake things. So how has the institution been able to, one, detect the problems of uh, fake documentation and deal with it? Thank you so much. Um, I will take it up in two folds, mm -hmm. that the vehicle registration and then driver licensing. Uh, at the vehicle registration section, when you come in and you want your vehicle to be registered, you must have your vehicle and then you must have the custom documents given to you. 
at times these custom documents are faked. So we have brought in the uh, customs onto our premises. And then they have their GC net connection with us here at the DVLA office. So when you come for registration, you first have to report to the customs. The customs will then go into the GC net and see whether duty has been paid, whether your documents itself is genuine. When they find it to be genuine, they endorse and then stamp. Then they release the document for the DVLA. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We bring those who are in charge to come and then join the DVLA in the DVLA premises. Has it always been the case? Oh yes, it has always been the case. Okay. In order for us that uh, we don't just lose revenue, or people don't uh, money that is supposed to go to government go into uh, any other private. I see. Mm -hmm. And when you come to the driver licensing section, we issue the driver's license. So we have got information of all licenses that we issue yeah. to the authority. And therefore, when you bring a fake license and we are in doubt, we go into our system. And then if the license is genuine, it comes out clearly. And I will say that this license is genuine. And then we deal with it. We renew it or we replace the license for you when it finally expires. So we have got arrangement in place to check fake documents that find their way into the DVLA premises. But they still come, right? Sure, they come. How? They come. How is it possible that people would just um, bring fake documents here? Is it through stealing or syndication or what, what exactly will make anyone come to DVLA with fake documents to register a vehicle? Uh, you, you agree with me that uh, many a time people who even hold or they get into the possession of the documents, they don't know the document is fake. Uh, an example, somebody who wanted license. Maybe you get to the gate and then somebody confronts you, what do you want? Oh, I want a license. It's oh, license, come. And then the person take the person around, sit down here and prepare a fake license for you. And maybe out of ignorance or whatever, you go away with it. Then in two years time, this your license expires. And since you know it is the DVLA that renews driver's license, you decide that you want to come and renew the license. You bring it into the authorities' premises. Now, before we renew, we go into the system to see if the license is genuine. Mm. So, in doing that, we realize that your license is not genuine. And then you ask them, where do you obtain your license? Oh, uh, it is someone who uh, did it for me. Oh, it is someone who uh, uh, assisted me. Uh, what we must know is that before you acquire a driver's license, definitely you have to go through a test. Because we want people who can drive only to be on the road so that uh, road crashes and others are reduced to the barest minimum. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, all these also perhaps border on uh, education of the citizen or sensitization of the citizen. Perhaps DVL is not doing enough to, to tell the average Ghanaian that when you come here for a particular service, you have to go through specific people. Are there clear guidelines on what people should do or uh, the processes they should go through when they are in your premise for a service? There is. There is. When you want driver's license, you come into the DVL premises. And in order that you don't fall into any wrong hands, all staffs of the authority have their tags around the neck. So you come, you see the person with a tag, and you know automatically this person is a DVL official. Quite apart from that, we have what crime service unit at the DVLA, and it is situated around the entrance of the authority. So when you come here and you are in doubt about what procedure to go through or what to do to acquire a license or register a vehicle, all you have to do is just go into the uh, crime service and then the crime service officials are ready to brief you and take through what you should do in order to acquire a license or to register a vehicle. So these are measures we have put in place so that our clients, when they come here, they know what they should do. Also, we have named all the blocks in the DVD premises where activities take place. So when you go out now, you will see that block E. Then we list there what activity takes place in block E. 
block A will list what activity takes place there, block B, C, and so on. All have activities that take place on those blocks. Apart from that, we have also on a board, on a, on a board here what amount is paid for what activity. And so when you come here, all that you need to know and all what you have to do in order to get what services you want is all displayed at the DVLA. So it makes activity or how to pro approach uh, any service that you want here very, very, very easy. So let's, let's shift a bit and to talk about um, roadworthiness. We've seen quite a couple of very, very, very old, uh, sometimes appears unmotorable vehicles in Circle, for example, Klein, Circle, Kaneshi. Do these vehicles also go through roadworthiness tests and are they certified as passed? You see unmotorable vehicles which are moving. I mean, you see. If the vehicle is moving, mm -hmm. then surely it's motorable. Okay, so it means that they pass their roadworthiness <laughs> um, tests. On a more serious note, the law is that if you use a commercial vehicle, then for every six months from the date of issue of your document, you are to report to the DVLA to have your vehicle examined, total examination, after which when you meet every requirement, then you are given a roadway certificate which enables you to use the rules. Also, if your vehicle is a private vehicle, every year you come to the DVLA, the vehicle is examined, and you are also issued with roadway certificate to use the road. Between the first day of issue and then the last day, that is the expiry date of your roadway, anything at all can happen to the vehicle. We therefore expect that drivers or vehicle owners must be responsible to the state of their vehicles. Uh, if the driver or the vehicle owner refuse to be responsible to his vehicle, then we have the police MTTU on the road whose responsibility is to make sure that vehicles, rickety vehicles, are taken off the road. Um, to boost that their effort, the DVLA, the National Road Safety Commission, and then the MTTU have formed a task force. This task force go onto the road every day. Then we also check and see whether vehicles that ply the road are in good condition. So uh, these are measures we have put in place to make sure that rickety vehicles, like you are saying, uh, are kept on the road. off the road. So a scenario where, for example, I live in the United Kingdom, yeah. I have a valid driving license, I come to this country, maybe I want to drive here for six months or a year before I return to where I originally live. Does the law permit me to use my UK driving license here in Ghana without any restriction? No, the law does not permit you to use the UK license in Ghana. Um, if you are coming from the UK and you hold international driving permit from the UK, from the UK that is a different story. That permits you to drive in Ghana for a period, a period that the, the, the international license permits. Good. Okay. Now, if you don't have that, then when you come into the country, you are to convert your foreign license into that of Ghanaian license, which will permit you to drive. In doing so, you have to uh, authenticate the license so that the authority here will be sure that that driver's license is not fake. It is a genuine license. And also, uh, you have to make sure that your license is valid. The license itself is not expired. If you have these things, then we will then convert that your license into uh, Ghanaian driver's license. That is, uh, you must authenticate the license and then the license must be valid. Then we can uh, convert it into Ghanaian license for you to enable you to drive in the country. And is the process simple? The process is just simple. You present the authentication and your license should not expire. You bring it here, we let you complete the necessary forms. If take you through there some little road signs mm -hmm. and and that's it the license is straight away converted for you what about if i'm a Ghanaian and i want to travel to the u.s 
for example, and um, I want to drive in the U.S. for, let's say, three months. Good. There is what provision. do I do? There is provision for that. Uh, if you are a Ghanaian, you are traveling outside the country, and you want to drive where you are going, and you have Ghanaian license, you report at the authority here, tell us you want to travel. Then we have a form, we'll give you the form, you complete the form, and we will give you an international driving permit. That permit is like a driver's license, mm. and it's valid for one year. We give you that. You add your local license to it, and then it's easy. you go outside and you can... And what, what if that one, one year expires? What do you do with that one? If you have an international driving license mm. and it runs out... Yeah, the last one of international driver's license issued by Ghana is one year. So when you happen to go outside and then uh, Come back. you you you, know, you stay there mm. uh, over a year, mm. then you have to present your license to the authorities there, wherever you are, or to convert it to, to convert it into their license. I see. Exactly. You present it to the licensing authority there, then they will convert it. They might also have procedures that we they use in converting license. So when you get to their office there, you follow their procedure and they convert that license into a Ghana I see. What if you come, you return to Ghana and maybe in two years time you want to go again? Do you come to renew your international driving permit or you get a new one? International driving permit is not renewed. It's valid for one year, I see. and when it expires, it expires. It's, it's finished. It's finished. You so need to you get come a new one. and then you collect a Go new through one, the process to get which a is new also one. valid for a year. Right. We, we've also had concerns about people complaining that they come here and the, there are long queues, long queues. This is due to uh, inefficiency or slow work of the DVLA, or it is the responsibility of those who are coming in that are not complying that, that results in these delays. Um, are there delays here in the first place? Maybe? There are no delays here. You know, acquiring a license, one needs to go through a procedure. Why so? It is so because before you allow somebody to jump onto the road and then move a vehicle, then that person must be competent. Because you know driving is a question of competence. Oh, ability to handle the vehicle on the road mm. where you will not cause any crash or inconvenience on the road. Or risk the life of other roads. Exactly, so one must be competent. Mm. Now, driving, you agree with me, involves life. Yeah. We would not like somebody to misbehave on the road to go and claim the life of another person. So before we allow you to possess a license, genuine, of course, from the DVL, and jump up to the road, then definitely we must make sure you are good. We must make sure you can control the vehicle. We can make sure. We must make sure uh, you won't be a potential danger on the road. So there is a process you have to go through when you want a driver's license. These processes license, are mandatory. Mandatory. You definitely must go through, unless you decide to go in for a fake license. But for you to acquire a genuine license from the DVL, then you need to go through that process. First, you must be 18 years and above. You must have a good sight. Mm. You must be physically fit. Then, when you come here, we will then, uh, after looking at all these things, we will have a form for you to complete. You complete these forms, then you go for eye screening. Then we will give you a learner license and give you dates to come for a written exam. The written exam is computer-based. You write the exam, and then immediately you finish the exam, you click a button, and the results comes. So whether you fail or you, you pass, immediately you know. We have done that so that the human interference in the issue of license will reduce. When you, get a, you write the exam and you pass, then you are given a date to come for practical test. You come, we take you onto the road, and then we observe how you move the vehicle, how you bring the vehicle to a stop without the engine going off, how you change lanes, how you really bend corners, how you move your vehicle up a hill, how you go uh, with the vehicle in slopings, how you reverse your vehicle. When we check all this, then we are satisfied with your driving. Then 
within you passed and you are given a certificate. This certificate that will be given to you is known as certificate of competency. Mm -hmm. Then we will have the number of this certificate printed on your license card and then you are given a date to come for your license. So when you pass the practical test, you go into one of our rooms, you will be captured, you will be given a temporary license and then they will tell you when you should come for your original license. Um, before you leave, we have the process where we even take your telephone number. So when your license is ready, we just call you and tell you your driver's license is ready. So please, we will add please. Please, you can report at the DVLA for your driver's license. So um, we're here at the Vito. Uh, the Vito is in Domi, and I'm, I understand that it's uh, the the what is it? The, the vehicle, the vehicle inspection, 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 technical, technical organization. Organization. Yeah. So this is a private garage. It's one of the numerous garages scattered across the country where the process of vehicle inspection, mandated by law, is, ex is expected to start. So. We're here, and what we're going to do here is to walk through the process that takes place here so you will have a better understanding of exactly what you do here when you drive your unlicensed car here or your car which needs um, new road-worthy registration. So this is Joe News Exclusive, and uh, Kwame is here to yes. help us. So Kwame, walk us through what we do here. So typically, there's a car which is coming yes, in. Car, so and, um, this is the first stage. The so, car will come in. So, boss, the, the car will come in. Yeah, come. And then the first thing they do is they receive a number. They receive a number? Yes. Okay. So, what's the essence of receiving this number, which he has already? Basically, it's first come, first, first serve. Okay. okay. So, so, then he goes. Then yes. another one comes. They so receive that's the number, it. and then they go and park the okay. car. So, okay. then another one comes. Yes. So, I thank you, boss. And then, oh, that's a Porsche car. Very Porsche car. And so, that is the come. procedure. And then he will... Receive the next number. Okay. okay. So the next number will be 41. So he roll yes. down, right? Yes. He roll down the window. And get a number. Yes. First of all, he has to show his um, his card documents before we can give him the number. Because you know, some people they bring the wrong documents with the wrong car. So then we have to let them go back and then and get the right get the right one. So what yeah. your guy is doing is to inspect the documents. Yes. And how, and how is it done? It's so easy, oh? No, it's very, it's very easy. We'll okay. show you in a minute. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So when he's done, he'll park okay. his car. He'll park his car. And then the next one is the vehicle. So this person here, the taxi, is, is doing the next stage or yeah, is not? the is next stage, yeah. Okay. This is the next stage. Okay. This stage is called the... Um, the visual inspection. Visual, uh, visual inspection. inspection. Which basically means that we, we cross check your your VRC. Okay, with the so car. Let's, let's get him to tell us what is what's your name, boss? I'm Prince Asante. So let's 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 face the camera a bit. Oh, okay. uh, Prince Asari. Asante. Asante. Okay, so what are you doing? Um, now? I'm doing identification. Okay. For the vehicle. And what exactly do you go through to do I'll it? I'll go through the document and see how best it is. Um, we check, we cross check the chassis number, we check the engine, that there was any visual or something. So visual, you just use your eyes to check to before check. it goes straight. Okay, you so know, why, is, why is the visual inspection necessary? It's very necessary because this part is the mechanical part. Mm -hmm. You see, this one is with the machine, mm -hmm. okay, um, it's, uh, it's automatic. You see? Automated. Yes, automated. So with here, we use our your eyes, eyes, eyes to, to check, check everything before we go there. So they they'll check the tires, they'll check your lights, and then they'll check uh, your chassis fire number. Yes, the fire extinguisher and triangle. So if if for example um, you 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 check yeah. and anything is wrong. Yeah. Visually, Very good. so this car will not continue to the next it process. No, 
it will continue. Then we will write down the faults. Okay. So when we finish the test, you receive your your reports. You see, okay. and then all the faults will be there. Okay. Then we tell you to go and rectify the faults, okay. and then you come back. When you've rectified the faults, then you get your I see. everybody sticker. Okay. All right. So thanks. Uh, so we're through. So from here, from here, then we'll go to the mechanical side. No. From here, they go and pay. Okay. So when they pay, then the the document will come out to the bay. Okay. This is the testing bay. The testing bay. Okay. So when it comes to the bay. They pick your documents, all right, and then they pick your car. So, so the these car cars are all in queue to go yes, to the same place. Exactly. Yeah. So, so can you show us what is done here when oh, they get here? Right now, we're so, testing. The, okay. Right now, we're testing the shop absorbers. Okay. Okay. We check everything. Everything on the car. So now, the at this absorbers. stage, the driver has to be your official. Yes. An official of, of this place. Exactly, okay. yes. Because you don't want anybody yeah. to do anything yes. that will be different from... A testing officer, will you? A testing yeah. officer. We don't call okay. them drivers. Okay, testing officer. Yeah. So, okay. once it's done with the shock absorbers, we check the ties. So what? what this that? one, the machine will read it? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's automated. Okay. Everything here is. Okay. So, once it's done with the brakes, that was the brakes that you just checked. Okay. Wow. You do the front one first. And the when it's done with the, the front one, you go into the back one. Okay. Wow. You check the uh, the right one first. When it's done, you go into the left one. I okay. see. Yeah. And then it just basically. And then that's it. So yeah. who 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 is who is responsible for for this the readings that come from here? Who deals with it? It's automated, you yes. say. Yes. But there's somebody when it's done, who. Yeah. When it's done, the reading will come onto this onto this machine. computer. Yeah. Yes. And then they will just enter it with um, your car details and your, your chassis number, um, the number plate, the year. So is there no way anybody can fake this process? Maybe falsify it? Maybe you do some kululu in the system so that... No, no way. There are wrong things, but then they'll cover it up and pass the vehicle no anyway. Way. No way. No way. No way. Because of no the way. automated system. Exactly. It's not possible. Exactly. There's, there's, there's nothing no we can way. do. Okay. Human beings, there's nothing we can do you see so when it's done then they send it to um, the printing room which um, they print out your your results and then they'll give it to the customer I see so when you when come on. when a car comes on like that as you can see when it comes on like this no one does anything, anything anymore no one does anything the machine will read it Okay. Ah. okay. When it raises, and then it will start. Ah. You understand? So if you see this one, you see it started doing the left side. Okay, so when it's done, the left side and the right side. Will that, that's very interesting. Okay. So, okay. so results, right? You want to show us results? Yes. Okay. okay. Which you can see here, we checked the new um, zoom in a bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we checked the the brake force difference for the service brake. Yes. Then the brake force difference for the parking brake. Yeah. Which is the handbrake. It's a handbrake. Okay. We have a limit. All these limits is set by the government. Okay. Okay. And this is the. The measured what is meant yes for the car and so then you have to give a status report exactly then. so if the limit corresponds with the measure with the me yes then it becomes okay, okay. to certify which is as ready, okay. yeah which is so okay. assuming it was not okay you see like what, what this one uh -huh. this is the rare shock absorbers yeah the limit is less than 30 percent yes this is the reading 43 percent which is higher than the limit, yes. so it's not okay. Not okay. As you can see here, yes. so 
we give the customer the, the report and then the customer has to go and rectify the faults. I see. You see? So you don't rectify, you don't get your roadworthy. No, no, you don't get your, your roadworthy. I see. Unless you rectify the And you are the sure faults. nobody does Kululu in this? Nothing. There's, I mean, because I've seen some look. very crazy cars which have passed roadworthiness, and I wonder whether they're, they went through this system. No, no, then they don't come here. They really don't come here? They don't here. come here. Okay. So, so from here, where then do we go? I mean, okay, so after from here, you've gone this, you've seen this result. From here, they send it to the printing room. Yeah, it's just and then, so once they print, then we will distribute the results to the customer. Once, um, once he's done this, this part. Yeah. This is the, the back. Yes. yes. Yeah, the back part. They go here. We check under the car. Okay. That one is also automated. No. No, that is not no, automated. No, that's not that. So once it's done, we can go then. Then okay. they can show you okay. what they do under. Okay. Under. Because you are the one here, so go and follow you. Okay, so here yeah, another part. Yeah. This is what we call the underneath check. Okay. Yeah. Checking the um the other vehicle. Yeah. You see uh we're trying to raise the car so that we can uh, just have a free movement of the police. Just looking, you think yeah. this guy is yeah. okay. okay? You check, there's no oil in this. We are going to know. Some, no. That position is no. Great. After, we have to just check the piece to see if there's a play in the piece. Yeah, if there's a play in the piece. Well, what do you mean play? I mean, when there's a play. Room, it's shaking. It's shaking. Yeah, okay. locally it's shaking. Okay. So if it's shaking, you make it like this and then like this. So, I see. Totally just to check and see there's a play in the house. So every car goes through this process. Yes. It, it is a mask that you must go through. It needs to. Not in the mask. It needs to go So after you have finished and passed the people, what is next? You have to report that this is okay. Yeah. Everything we are doing, it goes into a database that was great. So after what we finish with the bricks and the suspensions, after the underneath check, we take it forward. We look at the headlamp of the car. The headlamp beats. The how beats are. The low beams and the high beams. And then all the lights, the light is not available. The indicator lights, that's called the traffic so, Yeah, and then the flat beams lights, warning lights and everything. We check that before. And after that, we go into the system and there should be a printout. Which the software we are using will indicate or show that the car is passed more safe. I would advise the public that it is very important. Now it is mandated that every vehicle must pass through this inspection process. You know, to human beings, it's very important. Our life is important. You know, you can buy a car, what's more than anything, but your life is your life worth more than the car. So you have to make sure the car you are using is always fit on the road. It's better you come through this so that you may even know technically you are driving a car. You don't have any idea of the vehicle. Maybe there's a problem under the car, you don't know. You may be driving and the wheel is out. You have a problem, you see. You can even cause an accident which will involve in another person's car third party. So it will be better you take care of the car. The mental, periodic maintenance is very important. So when the car fails, we fail you. You go out, you service it, we come back for retest. After that, we will test the vehicle for you. When the car is fit to run on the road, then you then good what is is being issued. Yeah. Okay.
when you want to check a vehicle headlamp V to get the correct alignment of the vehicle, yeah. it is very important that this must be done. The beam, you have to get the right beam of the vehicle. So you have to switch the headlamp to low beam, not high beam, low beam to check it. So, low beam, yeah. So when you put it on the low beam, so how, am I, how, how are you going to see a half? Yeah, you look inside. You have to the line, adjust it to the level. Then you can see inside. Mm. You see there's a, there's a plus inside. Yeah. The low beam must hit the middle of the headlamp. And the low beam also has a slightly cut okay. so that it may not affect the other user. Flex which yeah, 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 which is I mean heading towards you driving the vehicle. So after you see the low beam is okay from left, then you push the device to the right. The same measurements. Okay. So let's go to the right. Okay. Like this, you push it straight without moving it from one position to another. It should be straight. Okay. Then the same, you open and see. If the, see the plastic stays in the middle. Yes. So the low beam is okay. When the low beam is okay, then So, I mean, we've seen the process that go on here, and it's interesting. From the stage a car enters into your yard, the processes they go through, the visual inspection, the mechanical inspection, the light inspection, and to the stage of issuing the uh, roadworthy certificate to the owner of the vehicle. How does all of this fit into the whole safety thing? that the Ministry of Transport through DVLA is, has instituted. Vehicle inspection, as um, I stated about two years ago, I wow. said that it's about almost, we can, it's about 60%. Mm. Vehicle, that's about 60% of the tax or the work of the DVLA. Yeah. It's supposed to be like, uh, not, not the licensing of uh, drivers and all that, but, you know, if you take um, into consideration um, vehicle inspection should be about the, the most percentage of yeah. the work it's, of the vehicle. It should be very important. Yeah. Yeah. As far back as 2006, um, there were um, a lot of work were put in by the former uh, chief executive, that's who is now MP for Bekwai, mm -hmm. and then um, these um, s pilot um, or four companies were chosen to establish the vehicle inspection uh, test centers for the DVLA. Where we work, as of now, we've worked for about two years now, and uh, I think the impact is being felt on the roads. Yeah. Because um, if you take our activities, this is the first time where in, uh, we are identifying the vehicle user and then the vehicle itself, itself. To, to make it uh, biometric, that is, which I tell you, to exactly to uh, uh, inspect the car before satisfying mm. for the car to be used on our roads. And that is a very good um, concept. Yeah, I've seen that most of your systems so, are automated and it's computerized. Automated. We have uh, the visual inspection process, mm -hmm. that is whereby um, the uh, test engineer does it with his eyes and um, uses his own um, judgments. judgments. Mm -hmm. And then we set up the automated system and that everybody has nothing to, to, um, to do with it mm -hmm. and it's done by the machine. Yeah. And that's the process which um, is the most important mm -hmm. of the whole system. Mm -hmm. This check the axle. That is the axle. Um, it checks the uh, the ball joints and the, the everything. Shock, up the shock as always. Brakes. Suspensions, brakes, everything. That is the automated system. And then we also check the uh, the, the headlamps uh, of the vehicle. Check out um, the electronic parts, uh, the seat belts. Uh, everything is checked to make sure that the vehicle is roadworthy to be driven on our roads. Mm -hmm. And that is one of our um, main objective. We, the DVLA has licensed um, my company to do. To do. Are you are you happy with your rate of work? I mean, with how many vehicles come here a day and how much you finish in a day? Are you happy with the speed with which you finish your work? Yes, we we you know as I'm saying, uh, 
in fact, uh, statistically, if we can say that we need about 10 test, uh, test centers mm. in Greater Accra, Tema alone. alone. And then every region, for instance, in the Ashanti region, they probably need about five. Mm. And when it goes on to maybe Western region, they also need about five. Mm. And maybe to the Northern region, they can have them two in other places. So, you know, we need about um, 35 to 40 in test stations country. in the whole country. But we don't have that. We don't have now. So we don't have pressure on the field. And the pressure is that that is why DVLA is skeptic. Now they are going slowly. They've only allowed private vehicles and government vehicles and pre-registration vehicles to be tested and taken away from the commercial um, vehicles, mm -hmm. which nothing has been done. Mm -hmm. That is why most of the, the work we are doing is not being felt. Mm -hmm. Though they did this because they want to test, the, make it a pilot project yeah. before, but I think now it's overdue. Yeah. What I would say that the financial institutions and the technical institutions should get on board to bring this project to a success because we've seen that we've uh, uh, certificate licenses have been issued to a lot of companies, but they cannot put up because it's a very cost effective uh, project. And you need technical and you need technical expertise, and that is the most important aspect of it. But I think we can get over it. We can do it. Even the four companies can make us as much as about twenty additional uh, this and right. because these companies are know what they are doing exactly mm -hmm. and that is why I'm trying to we, we, we the government should come to our aid so that at least we can do the expansion way forward I mean when you look at the way your business operation is what do you see the future to be is it going to be good do you think it's going to be good for you sure, as absolutely. a private businessman absolutely are you happy that you put your money into absolutely the business absolutely it's not it's just a, a business a joint venture business, which for the private sector, you will not lose your money because you have the backing of the government yeah. as a regulation for you. And also, the government will also benefit from, from us through this cooperation because the roads are going to be safe. And I tell you now, the roads are more dangerous than the hospitals. People are dying on the roads more than the, uh, in, the, in the private hospitals. So we need quickly to intervene to do something about this.